Once I realized what an amazing tool fossils are for learning about the past, that's when I realized, okay, these are actually super awesome and I want to study them every day. My name is Rachel Moore and I'm a PhD student in the Department of Geological Sciences at the University of Alabama and I study fossil ammonites. Ammonites are a marine animal that existed millions of years ago. They're extinct now. They have coiled shells and would have been swimming around or floating in the ocean. In paleontology, we break down animals into two big categories. There's the vertebrates, they have spines, and then the invertebrates are fossils without spines. And what drew me to the invertebrates is that you can usually or sometimes find the whole body all at once. So there's a big chunk. It's most of that organism. When you're studying vertebrate fossils, you may find just a knee bone or just a toe or a tooth. And you're trying to reconstruct the animal from those small pieces. And so I wanted the excitement of finding most of the body of the animal that I'm working with. There's still lots of tiny fragments of my ammonites that I study, but I think that invertebrates, there's definitely a lot more interesting research questions that you can ask also because there's so many more of them in the fossil record. So our sample sizes are so much larger and that enables me to do a lot of statistics that you can't do as well with the vertebrate organisms. This research project is one chapter of my dissertation and this particular chapter, my research goal was to focus on the specific genus of ammonites. So genus is a group of species and the genus that I'm studying is the Placentisterus genus. And what I did was I found all of the Placentisterus specimens that I could in Alabama, some in the collections here, some also on campus at the Geological Survey of Alabama, and some are up in the McWayne Science Center in Birmingham. My research question was basically whether or not there are actually as many species as are currently reported in the literature. Because in this genus in Alabama, there may be as many as 14 species or subspecies based on what people have reported in the literature. So I collected a bunch of measurements of the shells and did some statistical analyses to assess whether or not there's really enough morphological or shape variation in the specimens to justify discriminating that many species. And in the end, what we found is it seems like there may actually only be one species in this genus here in Alabama. So there's a lot of variation, but it's along a continuous gradient and you can't point to specific places where here you can separate, these ones are clearly different from these other ones. I was a geology major in college and I was very interested in all aspects of geology except fossils. They seemed a little bit boring, like you would just see them on a shelf with a label and you're like, okay, what do I do with that? But then I took our paleontology course and I realized all of the information that we can learn from fossils and that's what absolutely hooked me. We can look at the shape of the body and think about how that may have influenced their lifestyle or what they were eating. Or in some cases, we can even pull chemical signatures from the shell to reconstruct water temperature. I think fossils are really fascinating because they're sort of like snapshots from the past. You can imagine what life might have looked like millions of years ago, way before our time. And it's especially interesting when those animals are no longer around today because we have to study their fossils as the only available material that we have to learn about them. So it's kind of like uncovering little secrets about the past. Mm -hmm.